of China Zizi volunteers in Wuhan hold a vegetarian cooking contest to encourage more people to go meatless. We find out what teachers at the Chenfu Elementary School in New Taipei City are doing to help children discover their passion for learning. Welcome to Zara Headlines, I'm Helen Niao, thank you for joining us. First up, in China's Hubei province, Wuhan City volunteers held a vegetarian cooking contest at the Wuhan Riverview Plaza, a popular tourist attraction to encourage members at the public to go meatless. The vegetarian dishes were not only tasty, but were also embedded with city's message of making a change for the better. <laughs> Hubei province Wuhan is a city that is surrounded by rivers and lakes and one known for its seafood. However, as more people have realized the importance of safeguarding the planet, vegetarianism here has become more popular. To encourage more members of the public to go meatless, city volunteers recently held a vegetarian cooking contest at the Wuhan Riverview Plaza. Mogu. The Chinese mushroom is dark in color, like the mountain. It represents city volunteers working in unity. I also added some red pepper, which represents inspiring more people to join our ranks. With city's philosophy embedded in each dish, volunteers hope to encourage more members of the public to go meatless and join their ranks. I want to encourage more people to give. This dish is called Treasure Fills the House. It means that we will collect more donations from kind-hearted people this year. <laughs> the Tsuji sisters told me that this dish was too easy to make. This dish only has one ingredient. I told them that this one represents a loving heart and that one represents pure thought. It was my first time trying meatless dishes. All of them were very delicious. Now I know that going meatless can benefit our health and the environment. Thanks to the cooking contest, participants realized the benefit of vegetarianism and vowed to spread the idea further to those around them when they return home. Moving to Indonesia, we meet one local volunteer, Kisya Ningxi, in Pati of Central Java, who since meeting Tsuji in 1999 has been devoted to helping impoverished families around her hometown. I remember that Master Jin Yin said, with the right things, we should just do them, and this present moment is the best time. Despite coming from an Islamic background, Kistia Ningxi takes Master Jin Yin's words to heart and puts Tsuji's ideals into practice. Following the flooding in Pati of Central Java, she puts on a volunteer vest to give to those in need. I am glad to be able to participate in the distribution. Today, I am no longer on the receiving end. I can finally fulfill my dream of helping others. Though I can only give my time and energy, I am already delighted. Always passionate in helping those in need, Kistia Ningxi has not forgotten to help out her fellow villagers after she became a midwife. In 1999, she met Tsuji through her friend and has been devoted to the Buddhist NGO ever since. Tsuji does not differentiate between race and ethnicity, which I love. I hope to become a part of the Tsuji family. Over the past 15 years, Kisti Yaningshi has not only given selflessly to help her fellow villagers, but has also encouraged her family to begin to sort recyclables. I hope that our affinity with Tsuji does not end after the floods, but that your love will be extended to the many more impoverished students and needy patients. Through dedicating herself to help her hometown, Kistia Ningxi has also gained immense joy and wisdom from within. In the Philippines and Boeing, the political unrest that broke out in September 2013 has left 120,000 residents homeless. Five months has passed since the riots, and city volunteers recently returned to the area, only to find out that there are still 40,000 refugees living in temporary shelters. Not wanting the children living in the camps to suffer from hunger, the volunteers quickly mobilized to deliver food to those in need. <laughs> The village of Rio Hondo is located to the south of Zamboanga city with residents primary of the Islamic faith. During the political unrest of September 2013, countless houses were destroyed here. So 
that's why they're in temp they're in the evacuation area you see them in schools you see them in our the biggest grandstand we have and you see them along the road because they have nowhere to go <laughs> and the city sports field are currently home to some 40,000 refugees and that doesn't include local schools which are served as shelters too. Uh, we also have... Uh, After the civil unrest broke out, 32 schools were turned into temporary shelters. Talong Talong Elementary School was closest to Ground Zero. As the riots broke out, the school became the first center to shelter survivors. There are already more than 60 people that have died from September to this time because of dengue, because of um, the conditions in the evacuation centers. The crowded spaces and poor sanitation mean that living conditions in the camps are simply inadequate. <laughs> to the baby. Where was he? Pari? Ah, look one. Ah, months, 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 months. Months, months. Medina and her children live in this small space, been born prematurely and suffering malnutrition. Two year old Jumi still hasn't yet learned to walk, while Nukisa, the youngest daughter, is now five months old. The space we have in the evacuation center is tiny, it's uncomfortable, and we don't have enough food to eat. She said this child... She made sugar water for her kid because she cannot afford baby formula. Empathizing with the children of Zamboanga, city volunteers immediately prepare nutritious supplements. This is rice and mongo and malungai um, leaf. This is very high protein, high calorie and high in vitamins. Normally we give this to children who are malnourished. Thanks to the volunteers' timely assistance, children in the refugee center finally have an opportunity to have their basic needs meet. With smiles now on the children's face, volunteers can rest easy knowing that their hard work has been worthwhile. Yeah! <laughs> As the children's food issue is sorted out, next city volunteers will pay their attention on a youngster's education. In our next report, we take you to Talong Talong Elementary School to meet a brother and sister pair who strive to continue on with their studies despite the harsh environment they inhabit. Moving to Taiwan's new Taipei City to help students see the world in a new and exciting way, teachers at the Chengfu Elementary School in Sansha District purchased digital cameras for their students out of their own pocket. Textbooks are boring. By stepping outside, we can learn about things the classroom isn't able to teach us. This pond is around 380 square meters. It has around 130 species native to Taiwan, seven or eight species of dragonflies, and some ten types of frogs. Following their teacher come students equipped with digital single lens reflex cameras, and their class on ecosystems starts right here. The ecosystem at the grass pond is very rich. Besides the often seen Chinese bubble, Japanese white eye, we can also find the crested serpent eagle and vibrantly colored dragonflies. We have been studying this area for two years. We can already recognize some basic dragonflies like the Neurothemis ramborii, the Scarlet Skimmer, the Annex Panopus, and other ones as well. <laughs> The camera is a tool for students to see things from a different perspective and through this process, they can understand biodiversity much better. It's hard to believe that these children with expensive cameras hanging off their necks all actually come from disadvantaged families facing financial difficulties. With the school lacking in resources, the students' teachers decided to try to help by paying for the cameras out of their own pocket. 
When you hand over the equipment to the children, their family background becomes irrelevant. At the moment of pressing the shutter, everything is equal. During days off, these children will go on field trips with their teacher to photograph and observe different ecosystems. There are two types of birds there. Can you hear them? They are being very noisy. Recently, fifth grader Guo Bo Xiang visited his mother's homeland in Vietnam, and thanks to his camera, he was able to capture images of his grandmother's farming village. You need to have faith in children. When you see their work, you will see that it is all worth it. If you don't give them an opportunity, they will never get a chance to capture such beautiful images. Gaining an interest in the environment around them, these children now flip through field guides on their own, identifying different animals and insects. But what has been the catalyst for the change? <laughs> Because it makes me very happy, like I'm in heaven. Taking pictures is like being in heaven. On February 12, a magnitude 4.0 earthquake hit Taipei Shiling District as the epicenter of the quake was within the perimeter of the Datun Volcano Group and sparked concern as to whether the quake could be a sign of an impeding eruption. What is the likelihood of the Datun Group erupting in a lifetime? Let's find out more in our next report. At midnight on February 12, residents of Taipei's Shiling District were jolted from their sleep by a large earthquake. The substantial media coverage that followed triggered widespread panic. The question on everyone's minds was, what was the cause of the largest tremor to hit Taipei's Shiling District in 26 years? Our understanding is that there is no direct correlation between the earthquake and the volcano group. However, it's possible that some cracks were generated due to the contraction from the volcano's cooling process. I personally think that the seismic activity is related to the geology of the area. There is a huge magma reservoir within the Datun volcano group. As the lava in the volcano cools now, it shrinks in size. This will subsequently create gaps in the rock layers, and as gravity pulls downward, the rock layer on top falls, triggering an earthquake. 90% of the world's earthquakes occur along the Pacific Seismic Belt, known as the Ring of Fire and Taiwan is among the countries situated on the seismic belt. The subduction of the Philippine Sea Plate beneath the Eurasian Plate formed the Ryukyu Volcanic Arc and Taiwan's Datun Volcano Groups. While experts say that it is highly unlikely that the February 12th earthquake was a sign of an impending eruption, they also admit there is some correlation between it and the Datun Volcano Group. New evidence suggests that the most recent eruption was a mere 5,000 years ago. An active volcano is defined as one that has erupted within the past 10,000 years. But because this is an active volcano, it is safe to say it won't erupt tomorrow. Thermal emission changes at the volcano's surface and seismic activity are all warning signs that a volcano may be stirring to life. While there is a chance that a volcano may suddenly erupt without warning, what is certain is that members of the public can at least be prepared. As a volcano is about to erupt, magma will force its way upward towards the surface, and we will experience a lot of earthquakes, hundreds or even thousands of them in a day. We haven't ruled out the possibility of the Datun Volcano Group erupting in the future, but whether it will erupt in our lifetime or in 500 or 1,000 years from now, it's very hard to deduce based on the evidence we have now. Those with relatively large eruptions will spew smoke, hot ash and lava, but eruption is highly unlikely at this stage. I think the chance of it erupting during our lifetime are zero, but we must continue our observations for the sake of our future generation. Through continuous monitoring of seismic activity and direct observation of precursory signs, it is now possible to anticipate volcanic eruptions and warnings to reach the public in time. 
following up on the last report as the Datun volcano grew remains active in the unlikely event an eruption occurs it will endanger the lives of some 6 million people and impact areas throughout the region including Beitou and Shiling. Does the government have emergency plans in place? Let's take a look. An anomalous increase in temperature, gas emissions, ground deformation or an increase of seismic activity are all signs that a volcano is about to erupt. Early detection of these warning signs can ensure zero casualties. What about Taiwan? If one day magma is expelled from the Qixin Mountain, the lava will flow northwards towards Jinshan or disperse southwards into the rivers. If there was a large amount, it might even flow westwards towards Beitou or Tianmu in the east. If we regularly monitor volcanic activity, most volcanoes offer warning signs days or even months before they erupt, and that will give us enough time to evacuate the area. Although Taiwan's academic research on volcanoes began a decade ago, however, it wasn't until some two years ago that the Taiwan Volcano Observatory was established. The observatory's primary missions include earthquake monitoring, geochemical analysis, observations of movements in the Earth's crust and providing their findings to the Central Weather Bureau. In the likelihood of a volcanic eruption, our emergency operation center will be set at level 2. Emergency operation centers in Shiling and Beitou will also be established with members of the Fire Bureau, Police Department, Public Works Department and Health Department deployed. Once an impending eruption has been determined, the Emergency Operation Center will evacuate areas in accordance with the potential size of the disaster. The Taipei City Government has allocated 233 schools, 12 disaster prevention parks, 146 recreation centers and 19 sports stadiums as temporary emergency shelters. In addition, each of the 456 boroughs in Taipei City also has its own community-based disaster prevention team to help with evacuation in the event of a crisis. The use of natural disaster maps and the integration of disaster prevention information can help minimize loss of life, injury and damage in the event of a volcanic disaster. In Taiwan, students and teachers from the Gongliao Elementary School in New Taipei City in a nursing university in Thailand recently made a trip to the Tsiji Guanju grounds to gain a better understanding of how to sort their garbage. Meanwhile, a community volunteer training seminar was also held at the Tsiji Guanju grounds, after which many participants vowed to join the Buddhist NGO. We don't need to light the eternal flame. If we can open our hearts to others, we not only brighten up our lives but also those around us. Listening closely to a senior Tsuji volunteer, community volunteer Yang Wenling, whose father is already a Tsuji volunteer, says she hopes to encourage her mother to walk the Tsuji path as well. I have learned many valuable lessons today, such as that we need to cultivate merit ourselves. My father and I have known about Tsuji for a long time, but I hope my mother can also join us on the Bodhisattva path. To encourage more people to join Tsuji, a community volunteer training seminar was held at the Tsuji Guanzhou grounds in Taipei. After attending the seminar, community volunteer Jian Kai Zhen and her twin sister hoped to learn more. Before, I didn't know much about Tsuji. I have learned a lot through today's seminar. Everyone is kind-hearted, outgoing and passionate about volunteering. I hope that I have the chance to learn more about Tsuji. After volunteering as teachers for Tsuji's after-school program, Cao Zhijie and his fiancée decided to walk the Tsuji path together. The Tsuji brothers and sisters shared a lot with everyone and they encouraged couples to walk the Tsuji path together. I hope that we have the chance to do so and be a family that is known for doing good deeds. Thanks to volunteer training seminar, participants all go home with a deeper understanding of the Buddhist NGO, while many also promise to join the volunteers' ranks. 
Also at the Ciji Guanzhu grounds are children from the Gongliao Elementary School who gather to gain a better understanding of how to sort their garbage. After sorting the recyclables, the students thoughtfully clean up their surroundings. Walking slowly into Tsuji's recycling station are the teachers and students of a nursing school in Thailand. Despite the language barrier, with the help of a translator, everyone learns how to better sort their garbage. The president of the school first visited our recycling station with other organizations. I think she was inspired by the efforts of our volunteers. That's why she kept coming back. Today is her third time here. Also inspired by Tsuji's recycling effort is Luo Yan, who is the director of a design company in China's Guangzhou. Today she is here with her employees. Many people with money are constantly wasting resources. If we want to protect our environment, we need to start with ourselves. Through hands-on experience, many employees have realized the importance of sorting their garbage. I realized that sorting our trash is actually not a bad idea. Seeing the surrounding clean and tidy once again and the volunteer smiles make me very happy. With environmental concepts in mind, everyone promises to spread Tsuji's recycling efforts far and wide when they return home. To care for the seniors in Canada, Vancouver Tsuji volunteers recently visited a nursing home to entertain the residents there. Seeing that some of these residents were the same age as themselves, volunteers realized that having the ability to give is the greatest blessing one can have. Tsuji volunteers in Canada put on an elegant sign language performance for their audience. Volunteers also prepared traditional Chinese dance routines to entertain the 50-some residents at the senior home, including one who is 109. We're here to sing and play a few songs for the seniors to lighten up the atmosphere of an otherwise quiet home. The accompanying pianist is actually a professor from the University of British Columbia, and his masterful performance left many impressed. I really enjoyed the, the great variety of music and uh, dancing that the Chinese opera, and uh, to see the traditional Chinese dances, wonderful kind of work that they're doing. The lively performances liven up the otherwise sedate senior home as everyone enjoys each other's company on this fine day. We go to Guatemala at the end of the show. Tsuji volunteers from the Dominican Republic, Honduras and El Salvador travel to the country to attend a New Year's Blessing ceremony and a volunteer training seminar. To make sure trainees can better understand Tsuji's philosophy, the seminar was conducted in Spanish. We will leave you with these images. Thank you for tuning in. Goodbye.